Hello and welcome to Living Word, growing a family that experiences every promise of God. You're listening to another life-changing word from Pastor Scott Anderson. For more information, visit our website at livingwordonline.com. We continue on our series called Christ Is. Christ Is. It's about putting Christ in the middle of your crisis. Whatever you're going through, whatever's in life, and what I'd like you to do is take a moment, think about it, maybe jot it down if you want, but I'll bet you in this room we all have some level of crisis in our lives. It might be a debt crisis, and I think that most of us probably one way or another may have a debt crisis. It could be a crisis within your job, within your work, or maybe you need a job and there's a crisis in that. Maybe the crisis is how much that you're able to make, and your crisis could be something in a relationship. Maybe it's a crisis within your marriage. Maybe it's a crisis that you don't have a marriage. Maybe it's a crisis within family members and an estranged uh, child or, or haven't talked to your parents or, or a brother or sisters or maybe it's a health crisis, right? And you're like, man, I need to get exercise. I need to get a little healthier. I'm dealing with this pain. I'm dealing with these symptoms. Could be an emotional crisis and I just can't seem to get happy and I, I got a dark cloud about me. And so we have in this room, I bet you we all have some level of crisis that we're going through. And this series is all about putting Christ into your crisis. And when I I put Christ in, it's amazing what I get out. And what has happened is, is we have bought in oftentimes into the world philosophy and we're putting world systems into our crisis and nothing good is coming out because what I put in always dictates what I get out. I cook a, a pot roast about once a month and I put all of God's goodness into that pot roast, all the good stuff. How many people know that what I put in it, adds, everything I put into it adds flavor to it and dictates how it's going to come out? How much of this would I have to put into my pot roast? Now, what's funny about this is my brother thought when we did the wake-up show, I brought this out, and he thought it was a Chewbacca, you know, from Star Wars, a Wookiee. And he's like, oh, my gosh, that explains. Because instead of thumbs up, he used to send people Chewbacca's. And he's like, yeah, I got weird reactions every time I send somebody a Chewbacca. How much Chewbacca do you need to put into your pot roast to make a mess of your pot roasts? Not a whole lot. How much Chewbacca do you need to put into your marriage to get a messed up marriage? Not a whole lot, right? You don't have to put a whole, right? You don't have to have a whole lot of bad attitude when you get home to get in a fight with your spouse. Amen? Right? You could have been nice 80% of the, 90% of the time. It was just that one rude comment. It was that one rudeness. You don't have to be lazy all the time, just a little Chewbacca. Turn to your neighbor and say, no Chewbacca. We don't want no Chewbacca in our life. It's just a little bit of Chewbacca. Me and um, years ago, uh, Friday, and Friday's always has been our date day. And so we'd go out on a, a date, so, uh, you know, it'd be like lunchtime. The kids are in school, so we go out for a, a glorious lunch conversation, have so much fun, and then we go see a movie in the afternoon and enjoy the, the, the movie and experience, and then we'd go have a dinner. And we'd go out to dinner and talk and laugh, have so much fun, and then we'd be driving home and talking. And as we pulled into our neighborhood, I would say something dumb or rude or insensitive every time. Right? You ever do that where you say something, you're like, oh, no, no, come back. No, bad, dad. Bad, Scott. Every time. And then I would lose out on the reward that the date was supposed to offer. Every time. 99% of the date was amazing. It was the one stupid Chewbacca comment that I would make. So then I decided, well, you know what? On the way home, I just won't talk. But then now I'm just not part of the conversation and I'm not talking, so we got in another fight. It didn't matter. You don't have to put a whole lot of Chewbacca. That's why we have to be diligent. All right? We, we have to be diligent to make sure that the only things that I'm putting in is what I want to come out. Not just a little bit, not a little bit of rudeness, not a, a little bit of worry, not a little bit of stress, not a little bit of anxiety, not a little bit of negative thinking, not even just a little bit is what should go into my day, my week, into my crisis. But instead, everything that goes in should be Christ because then I end up with a Christus rather than a crisis. And what I get out tends to be more of what I want to get out. And here's the problem. A lot of people out there, they think that they're putting Christ in, but they're not. 
because they don't have a good idea of what really Christ is. And over the next two weeks, we're going to find out four things that Christ is so that I know that what I'm putting in is the right stuff to put in. I don't know why I'm holding a Chewbacca the whole time. That probably doesn't look right. <laughs> People online are like, what is he doing? Uh, in Italy, I ordered a pepperoni pizza, right? The most popular pizza that the world knows I ordered. So it comes back, and of course, it's not cut. They don't cut the pizzas over there. And, but it has these big old pieces of meat that's the wrong color. And I'm looking at it, and I'm like, that's not pepperoni. And the guy goes, that is pepperoni. And I'm like, that is not pepperoni. I know what pepperoni looks like, and it doesn't look like that. He's like, that is pepperoni. And my wife goes, that's salami. He goes, it is. Salami is pepperoni. I said, no, pepperoni is pepperoni. Salami is not pepperoni, right? How do you guys, you're a 2,000-year-old civilization, and you guys don't know what pepperoni is. That's shame on you. Shame on you. The most popular pizza, and you guys don't make it. And here's the thing. Because of how oftentimes we grew up and because things that are on the inside and we got misconceptions and we got wrong beliefs and we think we're putting pepperoni on our lives, but we're putting the stupid salami on and we're calling it pepperoni, but it's not producing anything good. And that's why we need to learn what Christ is so I know what to put into my day, into my week, into my relationships. So I'm putting all the right stuff in so that I'm getting the right stuff out. First John 4 is where we're going to start. Number one is going to be the big one. It's really, I think, a majority of what Christ is. Beloved, let us, somebody, love one another. For love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Verse 12. No one has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God abides in us, and his love has been perfected in us. Verse 18, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear involves torment. Here's the thing, folks. Last week we talked about in our crisis, oftentimes we get full of fear when Christ is not in. But we just saw in that scripture that if I want to get rid of the fear, the stress, the anxiety, and the worry, all I have to do is put love in because fear cannot reside where love is. I need to put a little bit of, come on, somebody out there. We got to put a little love in. Whatever I'm doing. If I, and how do I know I'm not putting Christ in? Because I'm full of fear. I'm full of worry. I'm full of anxiety. I don't know what's going to do. But if you put love into your crisis, you're putting Christ into your crisis, making it a crisis. And so it'll drive the fear, the worry, and the anxiety out. Got to learn to put the love in. You know, it's interesting that I was just thinking of different Bible stories that kind of depict this. You know, Noah was the only one that believed in God. He was a good man. So God had one. That's all he had is one. And so God sent and the waves and the ocean and the rain and boom, wiped out all but Noah and his family. 420-ish years later, we get on the scene again and now you have Abraham. Only one. That's all God got again. In another 420 years, he's only got one. After all of that time, he destroyed everything, and now we're back down to just one. Then we skip ahead to 2,000 years from then, and most of the world at the time was not Christian. Most of it was Roman, and, and, and Roman was all about sun god, moon god, Baal, all these different gods, not about the God. We get to a time when God was once again obsolete, and what did God do this time? He put love into his crisis, right? He sent Jesus Christ. God so loved the world that he sent his only son into the world. He gave love into his crisis. And what happened then, in less than 300 years, Rome became a Christian nation. Then you see, right, and now 2,000 years later, the number one, the largest belief in the world today is Christianity by almost Double with over 2.2 billion Christians in the world today. How many people know that love is a difference maker? Many of us, though, we put, we put anger and frustration and annoyance, and, right, and we put negative words into our crisis. And we wonder why nothing changes. But if we'll do what the picture of God did and we put some love into our crisis, it's amazing the difference that it'll make. Here's the thing. Many of us, all, we all want to be good people. We all do. We all want to love. We're like, yes, amen. 
But most people don't really know what love is because love has been Hollywoodized. And love is a feeling that comes and goes. And I just felt a lot of love. And so we have a wrong perception of what love is. So we think that we're putting love in. But how many people know we're just putting Chewbacca's in? Right? We're not putting love in. We're not putting this in. We're putting Chewbacca's into things. And we're wondering why we get a whole bunch of Chewbacca coming out into the different areas of our life. I was, uh, in order to do this teaching today, I was watching a whole bunch of videos. I came across this one rabbi, uh, a video, and he was talking about what love is. And he called it, love is not fish love. I was like, fish love? That was the title of it. I was like, that's pretty cool. So I had to, I had to watch that. He said, well, I came across a young man who told me, I love fish. And I said, well, what do you love about fish? He said, well, you know, I love the way they taste. And when you fry them up or, or you boil them or, or you cook them in butter, I love all that. And he says, that's not love. That's fish love. What you're saying to me is you love fish, so you snatch them out of the pond and you fry them up and you eat them. It's not that you love fish, but you love what fish do for you. He said, this is what most people today have is what's called a fish love. You say you love, but it's more of what you can do for me than what I can give to you. So a young man, oh, I love her. So you snatch her out of the pond, you get her married because it's about what she can do for you emotionally, physically, what she can, it's all about what she can do for you, which is a fish love. It's not a God love because a God love is a love that gives. A God love is one that lives. See, it's not about me getting lifted up. It's about me lifting you up. It's not about, well, nobody encourages me. Well, don't stop worrying about that. Why don't you become the person that encourages them? You're the, well, somebody should give me a hand up. No, you should give somebody a hand up. See, you be that person. Come on, somebody out there. You be that person. We got to stop fish loving everything in our life, but instead we got to get into what a true love is. In my lifetime, I have spent one third of my life changing diapers. 15 years of changing diapers. I estimated over 10,000 diapers have been changed by these hands right here. They say that if you do something 10,000 times, you become very great at it. And I actually thought about it. I should bring and do some changing up here. You, it'd be like watching Michael Jordan shooting a basketball. It is amazing <laughs> to watch what I can do. Now, in the early years, young dads, you know what I'm talking about. It was just awkward just watching me change a diaper. It looked like a couple of old people making out. It was just so awkward. No, I'm just teasing. It was just... I don't know why I said that. I didn't plan on saying that. It was just so awkward. It just was all over the place. <laughs> this is what I got all over myself. Come on, young dads. You know, like every time, it was like Chewbacca was everywhere, right? And it was always holidays. Like before I go to church, she's like, hey, can you change the baby? And I'd get done, right? And I'm like, oh, my. And, I, and one Sunday, I actually came, and somebody's like, hey, what's that on your shirt? And I'm like, oh, my. <laughs> It's just chocolate. No, I'm just kidding. I didn't do that. <laughs> Chewbacca everywhere, right? But I became great at changing the diaper. But I have not had to change a diaper in seven years, four months, seven days, three hours, a couple minutes. So I'm just ballparking there, right? It's been so long. But one thing that I have missed about changing diapers, I do. I miss the wipes. I do. I miss them. And young dads, if you don't know what I'm talking about, please come on. It, it, it is, right? Because there's wipes everywhere. And so you're, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get a little personal, but I feel like we've grown together like over the last 10 minutes. Amen? <laughs> I get a little, I'm going to open up a little bit. I'm going to share some with you a little bit. Because you're sitting down in the bathroom and you look over and there's a wipe and there's nothing more precious in this world maybe than an amazing wipe that helps you be April fresh all day long. It's just glorious. Right? But it's like Jesus in a little state, right? Boop. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, right? No, it's been gone until I was sitting in the bathroom, and I looked over, and there was a glorious cylinder of wipes. Hadn't seen it for years. And I, I, I actually, I did. I said, God, you took time out of your busy schedule to bless me with a wipe. You have thought about me. I sound like David. You have thought about me today. This is the day that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and I will be glad in it. And so I reached over and I grabbed not one, not two, not three of these wipes. Not realizing that there was something called Clorox wipes. I did not know those existed.
At first I went, well, that feels weird. <laughs> and then I began to smell smoke. <laughs> and I let a scream that most of Mesa probably could hear because I burned my soul. All the way to my soul <laughs> was burned. <laughs> Many people out there you think you're grabbing the loves of uh, the, the wipe of love, but you're grabbing Clorox breach and you're putting on things and it's bringing a burn and a smoke and nothing good's coming out of it because you don't know what love is. And today, we're going to leave here today. Come on, somebody out there. Sorry. Here you go. love. That's a true story. I wish it wasn't true, but that's a true story. Go with me today uh, to uh, 1 Corinthians 13.4. Let's find out what love is. So I know what to put in. So I stopped putting Chewbacca's into my, my stuff in life. Love suffers long and is kind. So in the midst of my suffering, it's still kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. It's not puffed up. Does not behave rudely. Does not seek its own. Is not provoked. Thinks no evil. Does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Bears somebody all all things. Believes what? All things. Hopes? All things. Endures? All things. Love never fails. That love, my friends, is what does not fail. It's not a fish love. It's not what I get out of it, love. But it is a love of God who gave his son. It's the same sort of love that I put into every area and circumstance in my life. Early on, our first year of marriage, he was bliss. No, he wasn't. He was hell. I'm sorry. He was, he was tough. And some of you know what I'm talking about. It was t our first year, me and Holly, he was rough. Two oldest children get together, and I'm so, so right? I was just young and didn't know what to do, and I thought I was doing fish love, and I, it, we just fought and fought and fought. And I came across this scripture, and I was like, wow. And I decided to write it down. Back then, we didn't have cell phones. I wrote it down, and I put it in my wallet, and every morning when I woke up, I would read that, and then before I ate lunch, I would read it, and then at night before I went to bed, I would read it, and I determined that I was going to do that for one year. And what was amazing about that is every time I read it, I'd go, oh, okay, that was the problem. All right, I wasn't patient, and I definitely 100% wasn't kind. Okay, I could be better than that. I need to be kind. Okay, I definitely wasn't long-suffering. Okay, man, I was full of some envy. And, and I, as I went through it, I was able to solve all the problems that I'd had since the last reading by simply going, okay, this is what I need to do. And wouldn't you know, within one month, our marriage got a whole lot better. In six months, my gosh, it was amazing. How many people know, come on somebody, when you put some love in, God love, not world love, not Hollywood love, but when you put the right type of love in, and I challenge you to do this, just try it for one month. Write it down, put it in your, in your phone, and every morning look at it, every lunch look at it, every night look at it, and it'll remind you of, man, oh, I can do better than that. Because I'm telling you this, if you put love in, you will get love out. If you put Christ in, you'll be amazed at what happens in your marriage. In your marriage, if you would just put this love in for one week, the difference that you will see in your marriage. If you put this in with your, your kids, let's say you have strange kids, there's a lot of, I talk to people, well, my kids, and they they don't call me, and I call them and leave messages, and so we haven't talked for this amount of time. Yeah, see, the world says, well, just ignore it. But God says, no, love is going to conquer that. Just put some love in, some unconditional. Text them a couple times a week. Hey, thinking about you. Hope you have a great day. Call them and say, hey, love you. You don't have to call me back. I know you're busy and everything else is going on. Yeah, but pastor, they don't call me back. That's fish love. Fish love worries about them calling you back. God love says, just keep loving. Just keep loving. How, how long? Because love keeps enduring. It keeps going. It keeps loving. It keeps loving. It keeps loving. And in that type of love, it never fails. Well, I haven't talked to my, my siblings, my brother for this. Love is what's going to solve that problem. Well, you know what? My, my job and my boss and they, nobody, they don't recognize what I do once again. It's fish love. What do I get out of my job? No, no, no. What can I give into my job? And I'm going to love and I'm going to go there. And even if man does not reward me, man is not my rewarder. God is my rewarder. And every time that I work hard and every time I give my best, heaven's up there going boom, another one, another point, another point, and you will see a blessing come into your life if you'll live a life 
of loving and giving into relationships, into friendships, into whatever you are doing in life, if you'll just insert this godly love in, you'll be surprised at what you give out. I don't know how many of you, how many people saw Wonder Woman yet over the, over the weekend? Not many people. Best movie maybe I've ever seen in my life. I'm not lying. Like it was that good of a movie. It was an epic movie. And the last line of the movie, I went, woo, this was God. She said, the only thing that can save the world is love. And I went, amen. How many people know the only thing that can save your neighbor is love? The only thing that can save your children is love. The only thing that can save your marriage is love. The only thing that's going to save your life is love. The only thing in this world that can save this world is love. And I thought about how Hollywood, though they don't know what love is, in their movies, most of the time they seem to portray love, and this is what we love. We love to see Wonder Woman who lays it all down to go save an entire town. Why is she saving the town? Because that's love. That's laying down her life. It wasn't fish love. It wasn't what can I get out of that town, but it was what can I give into that town. You watch Jerry Maguire when you see the love and he lays down his life. And you're like, woo, you watch Pretty Woman and a rich billionaire doesn't care about her past and who she was. He just loves her just the way that she is. And you go, wow, that is great. It inspires you. You watch Braveheart and you're like, oh, that is love. You watch John Wick and you're like, well, that's a a lot of killing. That's not love. But it, there, was, there was no love in that movie. But, but for the most part, the hero tends to be, even when Hollywood does it, is the one who lays down their life. It's not the one with the fish love. We recognize that on the screen. We're like, oh, fish love. But then the ones that are loving, not based on what they do, but because they exist, we go, oh, that's love. And here's my challenge to you. You're writing your own movie. You're writing your own book. In your book, who are you going to be? Are you going to be the hero or heroine who can go forth and to love? Are you going to be the one that puts a smile on other people's faces? Are you going to be the one that lifts people up? Are you going to be the one that encourages people? Are you going to be a picture of Christ Jesus? Are you going to be the hero that people are still talking about because you are the one who laid down your life for the unlovable that are surrounded in your life because the only thing that can save them, come on somebody, the only thing that can save them is love. It is love. Bow your heads, close your eyes. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I said that earlier that God so loved the world that he gave his son. It's not based on you being good enough. It's not. It's ba- you're a pretty woman in this, in, this, in this whole scenario. It's not based on your past. It's based on the fact that you exist. And I know you might be messed up and the enemy is trying to tell you you're too messed up. There isn't anything such as too messed up. All, he loves you just the way you are. Change nothing about you. He wants you all of eternity. And all you have to do is believe in Jesus Christ. That is it. And you are saved. I know you've heard that somehow you had to be good enough to get into heaven. That's not true. You're good enough because Jesus died for every single one of your sins. Past, future, present, doesn't matter. They have been paid for. That price has been paid. If Thank you, you so say- much for joining us today. I know that you were blessed and you got some things that you can add to your life in whatever crisis you're in, you know that now it's a crisis. What a great message, putting love in, in the middle of in. Your, your trial. Can you, can you tell us one more thing uh, about the message that would be for the streamers who are you know, watching? One more thing is love never fails. I said it, but I want to continue to say it. Love, love. Well, what do I do, Pastor? Love. What about this? Love. What about that? Love. Love seems to be the, the main ingredient to conquering whatever problem you are. Well, I've tried loving. Yeah, we'll try it again and continue to try it and continue to do it because it will not fail. Arguing fails, discouragement fails, being upset, and mad, unforgiveness, all these things fail. But one thing that does not fail is always going to be love. Well, we appreciate you guys tuning in. It just means the world to us. And uh, if you want to give to this ministry and partner with us and help us reach and get this message out more and more and further and further, then I would just encourage you to donate. It's really easy to do. You can click on the screen here. You can go to Push Pay as well. That's another place you can donate. Do it online. Uh, but make sure your local church is always receiving your tithe. If you're not in a church, get in a church. That's super important to be in God's house every single week. Because church it? isn't something you watch. It's and you've got you a experience. great book. If with Father's Day is coming up on Father us. Father's Day is coming up. And if you want to get in the, the first uh, rapture, then you have to get the book, I guess. Okay, so this... I don't know if you knew this. This is going to get you in. This if you're is, a post-trib kind of person... Get them. You can pre-trib trib with that this book. Is, this is a pre-tribber. <laughs> Just teasing you. Hey. That's so powerful. <laughs> this is a... 
great Father's Day gift is about being more than a dad. Yeah. You know, oftentimes in, in Father we get provided and do these things. We forget that ultimately the most important part of being a father is creating a relationship that lasts a lifetime, one that turns into a best friendship. I want when I'm 50, 60 years old, my kids still coming to me and allowing me to be an influence in their life. And this, with all the funny stories in it, are going to give you the step-by-step -step guide wow. that you need to be an incredible father. It is More a, than a father. It is a great book. How do they, how do they get it? How do they get it? You're going to have to call the church. Okay. You order it on Amazon. You can get it on Amazon. You can get it through our website. You can come to my house and pick one up. I don't know. There's a lot of ways to get it. Excellent. But if you want it, you'll find a way. It'll be here on Sunday, too, so you can buy it on Sunday. <laughs> be blessed. We look forward to seeing you at Wake Up, where, where we wake, wake up. We do a morning Bible study every single day. We encourage you to search for that on our YouTube channel. We're going to continue wake the up. conversation. We do. We continue the conversation of this message. Be blessed. I know there's about seven more that are out there who want to come on up and they need a little bit more love and a little more encouragement. And if you know somebody's out there and they need a little nudge, grab them by the hand, say, I will come on up with them and I will pray with you right now. Amen. All of heaven.